What we'd like to do in the second part of the lecture is discuss the effects of the boundary layer on the flow field, which is what we really care about as engineers. So two BL effects on the flow field. And we're going to need another two characteristic distances to analyze that. But what I'll do first is uh, look at a turbulent and boundary, uh, sorry, a laminar and a turbulent boundary layer. And we'll just kind of discuss things qualitatively to start. So here on the x-axis, I'm going to plot u. On the y-axis, I'm going to plot y. And this is a um, laminar boundary layer. And the uh, first, uh, and then here we have a turbulent boundary layer. And what I'm going to also do is provide a more formal definition for delta. So uh, here we're going to call this delta. And so when y is greater than delta, we have that u is uh, equal to 0 0.99 times u infinity. And when y is less than delta, then u is a function of y. Um, and the reason why we use this definition as opposed to u equals u infinity is because when you come up with a solution for a boundary layer, uh, you're going to get an asymptotic solution where uh, you know, you have to go to y equals infinity to get uh, the solution that u equals to u infinity. And so for all practical purposes, we can get away with saying 99% it is the same thing. And so we just use it as, uh, you know, a practical truncation of that infinite uh, velocity profile that goes up to infinity. Um, and so here uh, you see two different velocity profiles. And the first is a laminar boundary layer. The second is a turbulent boundary layer. And what you'll notice is that uh, the laminar boundary layer has a much more gentle slope, whereas the turbulent boundary layer has a very steep slope. And that's because of this enhanced mixing. So a turbulent boundary layer is going to be very flat, and then it's going to have a very steep slope at the wall because you've got a lot of free stream flow being pulled in and a lot of slow flow from the wall being pushed up. And so as a result, you're going to have, of that mixing, you're going to have a very steep velocity profile at the gradient. And what we can say from that is that uh, D, I'll switch back to black, we have, du, dy, uh, laminar is going to be less than du, dy, turbulent. And we also know from earlier when we discussed the uh, analytical profile in laminar pipe flow that the shear stress at the wall is going to be equal to mu, du, dy. Uh, if we have a Newtonian fluid. And so as a result, we can say that um, tau uh, wall turb is going to be greater than tau wall lam. And that has important consequences as an engineer, obviously, because the shear stress at the wall is very closely related to drag, as we'll see in this lecture. And if we want to minimize the drag force, then we want to try to keep things laminar as long as possible. And so uh, some aspects of airfoil design come down to trying to maintain a laminar profile, um, depending on the setting. That can get complicated, and we'll talk about airfoil designs later on in the course. But for now, we're just looking at a simple flat plate. But now we want to talk about this uh, delta. We've given it a formal definition, and we saw... Uh, how delta is in some sense a measure of the thickness of the boundary layer. But in terms of the effects of the boundary layer on the flow field, the thickness of the boundary layer doesn't necessarily tell us a lot. So we want some other characteristic numbers. And one of them is going to be related to the amount of mass flow that has been lost to the boundary layer. And that might sound a little bit strange, but it's quite clear when you see, um, when you see uh, 
a graphic illustration of that mass displacement. So let's draw our Y versus U profile. Okay, so here we've got flow and the presence of this boundary layer has caused the flow close to the wall to be slower than it would have been if the wall wasn't there. And so we can consider this area, if the flow had been U infinity everywhere, then there's a certain amount of height that would be added, right? And so you could just imagine U infinity times uh, a height. So the, the loss of U infinity in this area is going to be a characteristic mass loss of the boundary layer. And what we would like to be able to do is take a, a number, which is going to be a height similar to delta, that is going to describe this uh, region. So the way that we'll do that is we're going to use some very simple integrals. Uh, and, and that height is going to be related to um, the integral from zero to infinity of u infinity minus u dy. Um, uh, now we know that at u infinity, we have u is equal to u, in, or sorry, at y equals infinity, u equals u infinity. So u equals u infinity at y much greater than delta, and u equals zero at y equals zero. So we can use this, uh, th so this is going to go to zero as we go to infinity. What we can do is we can pull a u infinity out. u infinity is just a constant. We can rewrite this integral from zero to infinity of one minus u over u infinity dy. And what you'll notice is that this integral is going to have units of y. It's going to be a height. And this integral, if we, this integral also u infinity minus u as you go up, that is capturing, is it's the area of the red portion, area of shaded region. So by dividing by u infinity, by pulling u infinity out, we have this characteristic height that we want. And what we're going to call this is the um, displacement thickness. So we're going to call it delta star. So delta star, which is the displacement thickness, is going to be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of one minus u over u infinity dy. And so this is a, a number that we can apply to our you know, simulations or to measurements of a flow field. And then if you have a velocity profile, you can assess how much mass has been displaced at a given point based on a boundary layer using this characteristic delta star. So now that we have this displacement thickness, what we'd like to do <clears throat> is utilize that in order to characterize momentum loss. So we're going to be after what's called a momentum deficit. So we'll have a number theta, which is a momentum deficit. And we can see this with a pictorial schematic. So here we have delta star. And delta star is that height of mass displacement that we just characterized. And uh, we're going to pick a height that is much h, which is much taller than delta star. And we're going to look at the momentum in the flow as we go along uh, from h to h plus delta star, right? Because as we progress along the plate, here I should, uh, you know, the plate starts here, so leading edge. And we've got a drag force on this plate, tau wall, which is going to be the primary and only in the way we've set up the scenario, that's gonna be the source of momentum loss. So we want a number that's gonna help us uh, describe that momentum loss basically, uh, which, is, uh, which is gonna potentially be related to 
um, the forces on the flow, which are again, an engineering variable that we care about. And um, so, so we've got momentum coming in, we have momentum going out, and we're going to have less momentum because of tau wall. And so let's discuss that momentum deficit because we can take that momentum deficit, divide out by the velocity at the entrance and the um, uh, density of the flow, and then we'll be able to get a, a, a height similar to delta squared, which is called a momentum deficit theta. That's the goal here. So to start, we have this delta momentum which is going to be equal to the integral from zero to h of rho u infinity squared dy. And then we're going to subtract off the momentum at the exit. So that's going to be the integral from zero to h plus delta star of rho u, because this is no longer uh, the inflow. We are now affected by the plate. So now we have rho u squared dy. So the first thing we're going to do is let's break up that second integral into two. And uh, there's a couple mathematical steps here uh, that we'll go through. And you'll see very quickly what we're aiming towards. So if we take 0 to h rho u infinity squared dy, that's unchanged. Now we want to take the second guy from 0 to h instead of h plus delta star. And this guy is going to be rho u squared dy minus integral from h to h plus delta star. So obviously, no, we can split up these integrals of rho u squared dy. The next thing we're going to do is divide out by rho u infinity. So let's take rho u infinity squared. Sorry, I should say rho u infinity squared. Now we've got integral from 0 to h dy minus the integral from 0 to h of u squared over u infinity squared dy. And then we have minus the integral from h to h plus delta star of also u squared over u infinity squared dy. OK, why did we bother doing that? All right, uh, what we can do, there, there's two things we can do here. The first one is that we can combine these integrals because they have the same bounds. So this becomes an integral from 0 to h of one minus u over u squared over u infinity squared dy. And then we'll take a closer look at this. So this is number two here. So in two, we have the integral from h to h plus delta star of u squared over u infinity squared dy. Now, why did we do that? Why do we want this guy by itself? You'll recall that I kind of emphasized that h is much greater than dh. So h, sorry, much greater than delta star. So we have h much greater than delta star. Uh, so this is a very large difference. And as a result, u at this height is going to be approximately equal to um, uh, u infinity. And from that, you can obviously say that u over u infinity squared is going to be approximately equal to 1. So this integral, this difference at the top, is going to be equal to approximately the integral from h to h plus delta star. This guy, you know, this guy's roughly 1. So then we're just integrating 1. That is going to be equal to y from h to h plus delta star, which is equal to h plus delta star minus h equals delta star. OK, we already have an expression for delta star, you will recall. So delta star is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus u over u infinity. But at h, so at h, uh, u is approximately equal to u infinity. So this integral equals zero. So one minus u over u infinity is approximately equal to zero. So we can write the integral from zero to h instead of from zero to infinity. Uh, so two, let's carry this on, is equal to the integral from zero to h, one minus u over u infinity dy. 
So if we put that all together, what did we have? We had uh, integral from zero to h, and they're both from zero to h, so I'm gonna put everything in brackets now, of one minus u squared over u infinity squared minus one minus u over u infinity dy. And of course, that is the same as saying these ones are going to cancel. So we can say u over u infinity squared. Sorry, that's actually wrong. It's going to be u over u infinity minus u over u infinity squared dy. And now we can use this expression to define theta. And we'll take it to infinity uh, for just aesthetic reasons. So we go from integrate from 0 to infinity. Uh, and we can pull out a u over u infinity to get a nice expression. u over u infinity, 1 minus u over u infinity dy. So now we have a fundamental definition for the amount of momentum that we lose, and we have a fundamental definition for the amount of mass that we lose, and those are uh, theta and delta star um, um, respectively. And if we look at this boundary layer, here we've got tau wall dx or some dx, we have momentum in, momentum out, and all of that is due to tau wall dx. And um, so what we'd like to be able to do is describe how these numbers change and then relate this to forces. So uh, we have a couple expressions here uh, for delta star, we know that the displacement thickness is going to be equal to, we'll use over x, delta star over x is going to be approximately equal to 1.72 over the square root of 3x. Uh, if we're laminar, and delta star over x is going to be equal to 0 0.048 over uh, the Reynolds number to the 1 fifth, if we're turbulent. We have similar expressions for theta. And uh, so these are empirical. These are coming from simulations and experimental measurements. And so we can check how well our simulation matches up with these numbers. Um, for theta, we have theta over x is equal to 0 0.664 over the square root of Reynolds. Uh, and that's for laminar. And we have theta over x is equal to 0 0.037 over uh, re x to the one fifth. That is for turbulent. And um, we can define one more quantity that's going to be useful for us, and that's called the skin friction coefficient, which is a dimensionless force. And CF is defined as uh, tau wall divided by one half uh, rho u infinity and this is a number that's tabulated because it's a convenient dimensionless number with which we can describe uh, frictional forces and um, and so uh, we can calculate F uh, friction is going to be equal to one half rho u, u infinity squared times the integral from x1 to x2 of C F x dx. And that's another essential statement. So now we've got three different overall, we have three different um, numbers that we can use to characterize the thickness of a, of a boundary layer. And we've got the 
delta, which is just this um, height at which u is no longer affected by the velocity profile is no longer affected by viscosity. And then we have a uh, mass thickness, which is related to delta, and it tells us uh, the amount of mass lost to the formation of that boundary layer. And we have a momentum thickness theta, um, and that's going to tell us uh, the relative importance of forces. We have some numbers that we can use to calculate all of these uh, quantities. Or sorry, we have some correlations that we can use to predict these quantities, and we can compare these correlations to uh, the simulation that we will run and see, OK, well, does this hold up? And, uh, and then lastly, we have a relation that tells us how we can use these numbers to calculate a frictional force. So these are some key quantities that we need in order to interpret and understand uh, behavior in the context of a flat plate boundary layer.